Welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSB Magazine. You're listening to a new The Hacker Factory podcast with hacker maker Philip Wiley. You're about to discover what the role of a professional hacker entails, the different specializations it holds, and what it takes to learn and become one. Enjoy the conversation as Philip and guests unveil the secrets of professional hacking, a mysterious, intriguing, and often misunderstood occupation. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. BugCrowd's award-winning platform combines actionable contextual intelligence with the skill and experience of the world's most elite hackers to help leading organizations identify and fix vulnerabilities, protect customers, and make the digitally connected world a safer place. Learn more at bugcrowd.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Hacker Factory Podcast. I'm your host, Philip Wiley, the Hacker Maker. Each episode, I have someone unique from the industry that has a story that will hopefully uh, inspire you to start your journey as a penetration tester, bug hunter, security researcher. And each episode, I have a really cool guest, and I'm really excited to have Raina Khalil on today. Uh, she is a, one of one of I, what I consider one of the best offensive security content creators out there. So that's how I found out about her. Saw her write-ups on the OSCP and the different videos and stuff she's creating. And she does some really good content. So I thought, what a better person to have on than someone that's helping educate others and someone that's passionate about education. So welcome to the show. Hi, Philip, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. <laughs> uh, so so great to meet you virtually. So, you know, you, you see people Me tweet, too. and you really don't get people's personalities until you either meet them in person or a Zoom call or something. Yep, yeah, and it's, it's, it's great to meet you too as, as well. So for some of our listeners that may not know of you, uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, um, um, my name is Rana Khalil. Um, I'm a senior IT security assessment analyst currently working in the banking sector. I've been in this uh, field for the past three years, give or take. Um, and uh, I have a, a bachelor's and a master's in computer science. Um, and I'm a content creator. So I, I've written um, OSCP and Hack the Box related blogs on the Medium platform. Um, I've also created uh, web security related videos on uh, YouTube. And recently I started my own academy where um, I, I create courses. Um, and yeah, so that's me. So uh, how did you get started? Because you mentioned you had your degree. So kind of share how you got started yeah um so i never learned security in university um there were just never courses there should have been because i was in computer science and at least secure coding is something that is relevant to computer science um however just like with most universities there wasn't really um, many courses or even any courses when it, it, that were security related um and so uh the first time I was introduced to it was when I was working as a software developer as part of like an internship, as part of my degree. Um, I was working as a software developer at a security company um, and that company hired consultants to do pen tests for them and to test uh, the application, to test um, the security of their applications. Now, I was a software developer on the quality assurance uh, team, so I was developing um, automated test cases for uh, ensuring like the application is functional. So when they brought in those consultants, um, I learned what it means to test um, an application um, uh, for any security flaws, and then I immediately thought, well, that should be part of quality assurance. I shouldn't be just making sure that the software is functional. I should also ensure that the software is also secure. Um, and so I told my manager at the time, and he was really supportive. He was like, okay, you know, we you dedicate a certain number of hours or days in a week where you uh, purely test the security of applications. Of course, they also hired the consultants because I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I had a few days where I could test the security of applications. Like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. So what I ended up doing is... Um, 
I bought the Web Application Hacker's Handbook, which is considered the Bible of web security. Um, and I would read it at home, learn as much as I can, um, and then come back to work and apply everything that I learned. And that's how I was introduced to um, to web security. And there I was also introduced to something called web application vulnerability scanners. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, they're uh, um, pretty much automated tools that crawl your web application and look for vulnerabilities. As someone that was like first introduced to this field, you know, and, you know, learning about all these new vulnerabilities and then someone, you know, sells you a scanner and tells you, you know, the scanner can find all these types of vulnerabilities. I thought like, wow, that's so amazing. How can a tool do all that? Um, uh, so, you know, I started using it and I was uncomfortable using it without knowing how it really works, like in the back end. Um, and so I ended up doing my master's degree in evaluating and comparing web application vulnerability scanners to see their limitations and what they're missing. Um, and yeah, I, I presented my, um, my work at a B-Sides conference here in Ottawa, and my manager happened to be in the, in, in the crowd. And that's how I got hired for in, in the organization that I'm currently in. Um, and then I moved up from there. That's awesome. That's that's a great start. And one of the things I, I think that, that that's a great way to start for someone that's wanting to get into offensive security is, you know, understanding, you know, the computer science, you know, a lot of folks that go through mm -hmm. security programs, they may have some networking and stuff, but they don't get much into coding and some of the things you learn from a computer science degree. Do you think that really kind of gave you an advantage learning to be a pen tester? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, something that I always like when people ask me, you know, I'm I'm currently a developer and I'm really trying to break into the security field and I feel like I'm wasting my time or, you know, I'm a Unix admin or my whole job is to, you know, um, let's say configure Active Directory all day and they feel like they're wasting time and they're not, you know, because they want to get to the pen testing role, but they're not getting there. Um, and I always say it's never wasted time at all because that knowledge that you gain from your software developer job or your Unix admin job is going to come in really, really handy when you're pen testing, you know, infrastructure or applications or uh, whatever. You'll have much more in-depth knowledge than pen testers who have been in this field for a while, but didn't start off the same way uh, that you do. So uh, definitely really important to know the fundamentals. So uh, while we're on the subject too, because I usually try to remember that, ask everyone this question because you always hear people, do I need to code to be a pen tester? And funny enough, I had Alyssa Knight on and Alyssa Knight doesn't know how to code, which was interesting to me. Someone that is that level and that good of a pen tester that doesn't know how to code. So what uh, I'm sure I kind of have an idea what you're, you're thinking, but what is your yeah. advice on that? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't think you need to know how to code in order to pen test. I think, however, um, I think in order to reach a really high and experienced position in pen testing, you do need to know how to code um, if you want to do things yourself. Now, there's always, you know, you could hire people to write a tool for you or a script for you, and this way you don't need to learn how to code. Um, but if you were to do it all by yourself, I do believe you need to learn how to code. Because like in pen testing engagement, certain things that we get is, you know, um, you can't, let's say you land on a box um, and currently there's no admins logged into the box. What you could do is you could write a bot for that, um, that checks in and when it checks in every, let's say, a minute or every couple of seconds um, and sees if someone logged in. And then if they log in, it, it'll dump the memory and send the hash back to you. You don't want to do that manually, right? Because you, you should be focused on other like boxes and other places in the network during the engagement. Um, and so you just write a script for it. And this is what I mean when I say coding. I, uh, it's more scripting and not actually like writing full on applications and so on. So I do believe, I know it's a controversial topic and um, people might be upset with that, but I do believe that you need to know how to at least script in order to, um, in order to be able to do everything yourself as a professional pen tester, if, that's, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it totally makes sense. So what, what language do you recommend? What, uh, what do you recommend scripting in? 
Oh, Python. That's why I do it in all my Web Security Academy videos. So I solve it always manually and I always write the, um, a script, an automated script for that exploit just so that people who are starting out um, learn how to code from the get go versus having to learn it later in your career. That's, that's great. And I think one of the things that's happened over the years too is like tools like Burp Suite, all the extensions and the Metasploit tools and all that has made it to where people didn't have to know how to script or code and they just use that as a crutch. And it's really, I think, prevented a lot of people from learning to script starting out, you know, because people before, you know, when I got started, Burp Suite was there and so was Metasploit. But you, when you go further back, you didn't have those tools. If someone was going to be a pen tester, they really had to know how to, to write scripts. It, and, and that's exactly what I mean when I say do everything yourself. Like, what if you get put in an environment where, you know, your tools are not approved, like Metasploit is not approved or Metasploit is going to get detected no matter what you do. Um, in that scenario, you need to develop your own scripts. You need to develop, your, you know, your own uh, tools. And if you don't know how to code, you you're, you become limited. You have to hire someone to do it for you. Um, and so it, it kind of, I guess, limits what you can do during an engagement. And that's why I always say it's something that you should always learn, um, even if you don't get a chance to use it. Although I find it really, really difficult to, to believe that, you know, once you learn how to code, you're never going to use it. I think, you know, it'll come naturally to you that, you know, I, I don't need to do this manually. I can script this, right? Um, and so I'm a huge proponent of, um, of coding, <laughs> of learning how to code. Yeah, and also for those that are they're trying to get started that hadn't broke into the industry yet, you know, if you have like a GitHub and you share your scripts and stuff, that's a good mm -hmm. way to get some attention and something to show potential employers when you're interviewing too. Absolutely. Yep. So how would you recommend while we're on this subject of coding and scripting? So how what would you recommend for someone that wanted to learn Python? That's a good question. Um, I keep getting asked that question every like in every video that I post. Um, and I do not have a good answer to that because I never learned Python in school either. It was really mostly Java based and there's no way I'm gonna write scripts in Java. Um, and so I learned Python on my own by just like Googling free resources online. And I don't, it's been a while. So I don't remember the resources, but if you just you know, Google Learn Python 3. There's a ton of free resources out there. Um, I also know um, TCM Academy recently um, uh, created a course um, or, or posted a course that teaches Python. And I heard that course is really good, so you could do that. Uh, but personally, for me, it was just a matter of Googling and then I'd write a script. And if I get stuck on like a certain uh, piece that I didn't know how to do, it's really stack overflow. That's what taught me how to code Python. And that's a good way of doing it. And that's really, you know, I'm still something, I still a work in progress for me, but I like your approach to here. I'm going to write this script and figure out how to do it. I think too many people like myself get hung up on, uh, code Academy, you're doing this. And then you get to a certain part where you really don't feel like you're learning much. And then you go try to find another book, maybe black hat Python or something. And you go through that. And, and you know, some of my friends that know how to, that are fluent with Python tell me, yeah, you got to do a project. You got to write a script or something. So that, that's yeah. great. Well, it, I, I did go, I do that as well, but then I realize that I have such limited time before the next thing comes up in a pen testing engagement that I've never done before and I need to learn and I can't just, you know, sit down and and um, like do a full on course for like a really simple script that I want to write. So I learn it on the go just because of the nature of the work that I do. Um, I wish I could like spend two months or three months on every subject, um, but I can't, unfortunately. Um, and so I, I learn. I tend to learn stuff on the go. Well, that, that's good too. And I, you know, I guess some of the resources out there really aren't geared towards the type of things mm -hmm. that we need to do as pen testers too. So you have to learn this other way and then you're going to have to go adapt to what you're trying to do in the first place. Yep. And it's a good skill to have in pen testing because like not every like, with web applications, every web application is different, right? Um, the vulnerabilities are the same, but understanding like the logic of the application and so on, yeah, every application is different. It's built with a different stack and so on. Um, and so 
being able to adapt and learn on the go is going to get you really far, I feel, in, in, in the pen testing field. Very interesting. It, always interesting to hear people's point of view on that. But, you know, one of the things you see, too, is the people that that are really good in the industry that have become really good pen testers. They're kind of, you know, they're they're no, they know how to code or they specialize in a certain area because it's kind of hard to to be really good at everything. So you see a lot of the people like even like uh, Tiberius has his auto recon script and some other people. So that have these different scripts. So it seems like you really need to focus on a certain area and learn how to code. So what do you, what are your feelings about specializing in a certain area? Or do you think someone oh, should do I'm, everything or, or what do you think? About oh, that? oh no, uh, I did not mean to, to say that someone should do everything. Yeah. I, uh, it's only, um, it depends on really your job. So if you have the option to, um, you know, um, specialize in an area and you being, you know, you have the ability to be selective on, you know, what you pen test, then sure, you, you could specialize in a certain area and stay in that area. So for me, like I would say I'm specialized in web security and nothing else in uh, pen testing. I just know general um, knowledge in everything else when it comes to pen testing. Um, but I'm specialized in web security. That's something that I've spent quite a bit of time uh, learning. It's also my field of interest, and that's why I spent a lot of time in it because I naturally gravitate uh, towards it. Um, However, I can't be selective in what I'm pen testing. So today it might be an application. Tomorrow it might be um, a mobile application. After tomorrow, well, a week later, it might be something Active Directory related and so on. And that's why I had to adapt to this whole learn on the go. And then when I have free time, I take courses that are specific to a certain area, like for example, the OSWE, which is specific to source code review, although I don't really do much source code review in my job, just because I have free time right now. However, if you're in a position where, um, where you can specialize and you can stay in, you know, being selective in pen, test in pen testing certain, um, you know, infrastructures or applications or so on, um, then go for it. Um, the one thing that I say you can't really cut corners and just be general on is the fundamentals. I think you really need to have a proper understanding of the fundamentals. Everything else, um, it's it's your personal choice whether you specialize in it or you have just enough knowledge to, you know, uh, do um, it to perform uh, and, you know, as a, not a good enough assessment that feels like you're only doing, you know, um, the bare minimum, but, you know, the level in the industry assessment, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And what, another thing is curious about too, because they always ask the questions about people always ask about coding and they always ask about certifications and degrees. So what are, what are your views in that area? Um, for certifications? Yeah. Certifications. And if, if you want, after that kind of uh, talk about degrees, how you, if you feel that's important for someone that's trying to get into uh, pen testing. Mm -hmm. It depends on the person. So I know a lot of um, successful pen testers who only have uh, college degrees and have no certifications at all. Um, and they're like the top of their field. Um, whereas um, I also know people who did university degrees and a bunch of certifications and they're also top of their field. So it really depends on your learning style. If you're more the type of person that, you know, um, likes the format of a full course that teaches you, um, uh, you know, about a certain area in cybersecurity, um, then go for the certifications route. Um, but if you're the type of person that, you know, would prefer to like, let's say Google things um, and learn on your own, um, then go, you know, that way, right? Um, I'm personally, although, you know, I, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the interview that um, I, I learned Python by Googling. Um, I actually do prefer, because I come from an academic background, I do prefer the uh, courses, you know, way or option. I prefer to have a, a course that teaches me everything um, that I need to know. However, you know, sooner, sooner or later in, in pen testing, you'll realize there's no such course that does that, uh, but at least it'll teach you certain fundamentals and it'll uh, pave the way for you to know 
how to learn more about uh, certain areas. So for me, I like certifications. Um, it, you know, it sets a goal for me. It sets a timeline on finishing it and so on. And so I personally do certifications. I was supposed to finish three this year, but then I started YouTube and everything went down the drain because um, YouTube takes a lot of time. Um, but yeah, I, I really like certifications um, and I would personally do them if I, you know, had them, you know, if you have the means to do that, you should, um, you should do that for sure. And for degrees, um, I'm seeing that less and less in this industry, like you don't need a degree. Um, and I don't know of, a, a, at least like where I live of a school that has a like a really proper cybersecurity degree that properly teaches you the fundamentals and so i'm a bit weary about universities that teach uh cybersecurity degrees um so yeah for me i have computer science degrees none of them were cybersecurity related yeah i think that's still like going back i think that's a good a good start is that computer science and that's even like people that want to get into you know, security, if they had like a, you know, just some basic degree in IT or something, those things can be helpful to. So with the content creation, really, so what got you interested in content creation? Oh, um, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, this goes back. Um, so I started, the first thing that I started doing was writing blogs. Um, and the reason I did that was because I felt like, you know, I was solving um, hack the box boxes, so HTB boxes. And then um, let's say a month passes by and I do the same box. And then all of a sudden I have the same difficulty I, or I have to um, Google, you know, the same uh, commands or, you know, learn about the same stuff that I had done a month ago. So I wasn't retaining knowledge that much um and the reason is because i wasn't documenting anything at all um and so it it was wasting my time the fact that i had to do it over and over again every time i saw the exact same box um and that's why i started uh the medium um uh, or the boxes that i sorry the write-ups on medium um and um and, and what i did for that is i started solving um uh, TJ Null's OSCP, H OSCP HTB like, uh, no, TJ Null's HTB OSCP like uh, boxes. Um, and so while I was uh, writing them up, I realized that I had um, gaps in my understanding and in my knowledge of certain areas. And um, I'm, I'm a bit OCD. I wouldn't publish anything, um, video or um, or a blog without making sure everything is correct and everything is explained properly. And so going through that process made sure that I never forget whatever content I documented. And even if I did forget it, it's all documented in one place and I could just search for it. And so that's how I got uh, started um, with the blogs. And then, you know, this year I wanted to level up um, and do something different. And so I started a YouTube channel um, and that was inspired by me actually doing the OSWE um, instead of the OSCP for, for the blogs. Um, so I was studying for the OSWE and it's really heavy on source code analysis and it's an advanced, um, it's an advanced cert. So it assumes your knowledge of like all these web related vulnerabilities. Um, and uh, there was an intern at my job and he would ask a ton of questions and I knew the answer to them, but I wasn't able to properly explain it. Uh, to him, and I felt like, well, if I can't explain it, that means there has to be somewhere at the back of my head some missing understanding of how the vulnerabilities work. And that's why I decided I want to do it instead of written form, I want to do it in verbal form. Um, and I, I started doing them in my YouTube videos, and now I have a much easier um, uh, ability to explain things because of that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool because, you know, that's one of the things they say about teaching too, you know, just traditional teaching. If you teach something, then you, you'll get better at it because you have to figure out how to explain it. And sometimes you're explaining it to people that don't understand that. So you can't use the technical terminology and stuff. So I can see how that, that helps. So that's probably really kind of, you know, you mentioned level up. That's, I guess that's probably leveled up your skills as a pen tester too, 
Oh, 100%. And it always like, because you're on a schedule, I want to release a video every, um, every week. You're always learning. You never like, you know, end up taking like a really long period where, you know, you're just doing your job in your job. You should be learning, obviously. Um, if you're not, you're switch jobs. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, for me, I also wanted to be learning in my personal time. And that kept me uh, motivated and kept me on a schedule like a certification would with like a timeline. And uh, that's kind of my style. So, so I really like it. So, you know, there's been a lot of people in recent years that have kind of, uh, you know, the mayor, Joe Helly, you know, there's others that do content creation, but it seemed like some of these people have done content creation. It's kind of got them noticed and, and helped them get into the industry. So do you think this is a good path for someone that's trying to get into pen testing that maybe don't have the on the job experience? Oh, 100%. Like um, the amount of job offers that I got just because people saw my medium posts or saw my videos and they would literally waive the interview portion just because they're like, we saw your videos. We know that you're qualified to do the job. Um, so the amount of people that did that for me um, or contacted me at least um, is, is like, to me is enough proof that if you do showcase uh, your skills, not only is it gonna improve your skills and improve your ability to communicate them, but it'll get you noticed and it'll very likely get you a job or at least help you with the interview process um, when you're applying to a job. That's good. That's really interesting because that's one of the things I never thought about with the content creation is someone seeing that and and wave the technical interview. But that's a very good point for you to be able to go through and create all these videos that would make sense. And and not always, you know, sometimes it seems like, you know, people are, are trying to stump people on the technical interview and that's not always the case. So, yeah. you, so that's a good, good thing. So that's a uh, good advice. I there. What's Thank that? you. I, I get nervous in technical interviews. So it's good that, you know, um, you know, people recognize that um, just because you're nervous, you might do a little bit worse than you would have if you weren't nervous. Um, and uh, the videos and the blogs are, are, are testament to that, I guess. And, you know, I think a lot of people that are highly, you know, you know, as well as I do being in the industry, that some people that are highly technical, they're just not good face to face with people. And I think we really got to do things different with the way they interview people or figure out something to make them feel comfortable because someone could be very, you know, have a very, you know, great technical background, be very good at what they're doing, but they're getting a technical interview. They forget things and they can't function. So I, absolutely. Like, I, I completely agree. I had actually one organization that I was applying to before I got the job that um, I have right now. Um, but what they did is um, they have both um, an in-person interview, but for those people who prefer a written interview, they they give them like a piece of paper and um, with questions and uh, you respond by writing your answers just in case you're more comfortable with the written format versus like the in-person format. And I feel like that makes sense in our field, especially if like our job is not to communicate our findings to the client. Um, our job is just to do like the technical work. If that's how it the job description is designed, um, then we should have that option of, you know, if, I'm not really good or I'm not comfortable because I don't know you. And this is the first time we met. Um, then there is this written format that I can prove to you that I actually know what I'm doing. Yeah. There's a lot of introverts in our industry. So definitely I yeah. think that would, so that that's really good to hear your point of view on that. So yeah, you've really, really taken to the content creation. That's one of the, how I found you, your, your OSCP write-ups. I mean, just going through and seeing that that's, that's really cool information because I have people always asking me, how do I study for the OSCP? And I always recommend TJ Knowles, uh, you know, H their hack the box OSCP like boxes or whatever and pass that on. But one of the things I've been sharing in recent year, probably within the past year or so is some of the stuff that you do, I share with people for resources. So thank you. So, so that's how I got to know you. So that's really cool for, you know, people to listen to this, pay attention, you know, make these videos. I mean, some people will do walkthroughs of uh, how they hacked a certain retired hack the box or something like that. So demonstrating those technical skills. So mm -hmm. one of the big things people, you know, look, tune in to the show for is, to, is tips on how to, to get into the industry and you've given some really good tips. So what would you recommend for someone that's wanting to become a pen tester? You know, what kind of path would you 
tell someone to start out that's wanting, how would you recommend them, you know, prepare to be a pen tester? That's a really good question. So I, um, so after my degrees, I kind of directly became a pen tester. Um, and I don't know if I would recommend that path um, because I feel like I was missing a lot of the fundamentals um, that I need to know as a pen tester. Um, and so I had to kind of learn them on the job. Um, I prefer that someone would learn the fundamentals first um, and then improve their skills through the job itself. Um, so I, I actually don't know because I, I went through the path that I'm not sure I would recommend. I don't know what advice uh, to give to people who want to get started in this field. I think, you know, the first thing that I would say is maybe take, um, if you're a certifications person, is take the Security Plus. It'll give you um, um, high level understanding of most of the general areas in uh, security. Um, and then I would recommend um, doing a uh, certification like either the OSCP or the new certification that came out from TCM Academy, the PMPT, um, Professional Network Penetration Tester, I think that's what it, it, it's, it's called. Um, and that should give you the general knowledge in terms of pen testing. And then there are, you know, in that alone, there are like a million different areas you could specialize in. Like I specialize in web security. Um, it's just a matter of like, once you do the general pen testing um, courses, you'll get introduced to all those areas and then you'll have an inclination towards, you know, pen testing a certain thing versus another. And that's kind of how you learn that maybe I want to specialize in that area while I do general pen testing um, because I'm really interested in, in that area. So for th those, th this is advice for people who want to get right directly into the field. Um, for people who are already in other fields, like you're already a Unix admin or you're already a software developer or so on, I would say um, start introducing security little by bit into your current job. Um, and then from there, um, try to move within the organization to a security job. So if you're a software developer, the first thing you should be doing is not becoming a pen tester, is you should be learning how to code securely. Um, and then once you do that, and then you learn how to do that and so on, if you're interested in something other than, um, you know, security of your code and security of web applications, then you start learning about that topic. Um, I don't know if that's good advice because I haven't done it that way, um, but I imagine that's how I would do it if I didn't go directly into the pen testing field. Because like I see a lot of people, they say that they want to become, a, uh, you know, they want a job in like being in a red teamer or so on. And like red teaming is really hard. Like there's pen testing and then there's red teaming. It's like a whole new level. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if beginners should be even in red teaming uh, positions. Um, so, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. Just a lot of the things you mentioned is really good advice. And, you know, everyone has unique advice. We have different people on shows. Some people will say you need to know how to code. Some people not. Some people think certification. Some people think not. Some people think degrees and stuff. And so there's, you know, a lot of different ways and at good points to all of them. And, and based on our experiences. I mean, you went the university route. So, and it was, you know, pretty smart that you figured out on your own when you're going through with, you know, as a developer, realizing that this stuff need to be tested while in the process. So that was great that you figured that out. You know, a lot of companies, you know, are slowly starting to figure that out or companies are doing the right place, the right way are, are doing that. So it's uh, really interesting to hear how you got in. Cause I really wasn't sure how you got started. So it's, some very interesting stories people have. Yeah, it's just um, being in the right place at the right time. So if, uh, you know, during that uh, intern or four months position, they hadn't hired the security consultants, my life would be completely different. Um, I wouldn't have been introduced to web security and then I wouldn't have I did my master's um, thesis in that. Um, and then I wouldn't have been noticed at the B-Sides conference and I wouldn't have gotten the job that I did. So it's it's really um, effort from your side, but it's also a lot of luck um, yeah. in being the right place at the right time. I totally yeah. agree with that. That's kind of like one of there's 
uh, was a recent college grad a couple years ago at one of our local DEF CON group meetings. And they did a, a talk on malware analysis and the hiring manager for, for Citibank was in the audience or Citigroup. And he saw the presentation and asked for their resume and they got, got the job. Cause just like you were talking about how some people were offering you jobs or you're getting past interviews because you did these videos, you know, he did a talk on malware analysis. So he basically did a technical interview for this hiring manager unaware that he was going to get hired. So the, yeah. yeah, the timing thing is, is definitely, definitely true. And, but you got to put yourself out there too, because some of those things like, you know, you're doing your videos and get past the, the technical interview, that's some effort you have to do on your own. You just can't expect people to discover things about you. You have to get out there and speak at conferences, create content, find a way to, you know, market yourself. 100%. It's a lot of hard work and, um, it's also a portion luck as well. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. true. There's always some, some amount of luck, you know, kind of like when I got started out now, there's a lot more pen testing jobs than when I started pen testing in 2012. But then there's a lot more people trying to get those jobs too. You know, yes. companies can be more picky because there's more people looking for those jobs. So the, the timing thing is luck. I, I totally have to agree with that. Yeah, and it's no longer also like uh, knowledge that is like specific. Only p few people know it because of like the amount of certifications and free content that is out there. Um, anyone who puts their mind to it um, can learn um, uh, at least the general um, concepts when it comes to pen testing for, you know, let's for free, really, if you're really good at Googling. Um, <laughs> and so there's also, yeah, you're right. There's a, a lot of applicants as well because there's much more jobs, much more people interested in like the sharing of knowledge, which is something that I 100% agree with, has become much more. Um, and so more people get to learn about this field and get into those jobs. So yeah, it was really, really great hearing your story. Is there anything you'd like to share with the listeners before we go? Hmm. Um, I guess I'll, I'll give advice because I get like this question a lot and, and I, 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 I can't keep up with Twitter messages anymore or YouTube <laughs> messages. I'm just one person and I have a full-time job plus like, you know, creating the videos and so on. Um, but, uh, you know, the different traits that are required uh, to be a pen tester or that are nice to have to be a pen tester. I get that question a lot. Um, and first one I think is uh, be curious in terms of like everything that you touch or everything that you come across um, and try to learn at least the basics of how it works. Um, and so I know like, for example, for the OSCP certification, there's just so much to learn. And I had to like stop myself. Like I would get an exploit and with the OSCP, as long as you know that this is vulnerable to an exploit, you just run the exploit, that's it. And then you move on. But when I first started with the, um, OSCP, I'm like, oh, I need to learn how this exploit exactly works. And I need to go in depth on how this and this works and so on. And then, you know, my lap time ended and I barely did anything and so on, except learn one script. Um, and so um, that might have not been useful for the OSCP, but it'll be really useful for you in your um, in your pen testing uh, career, because the time that you put it into this one script is going to come in handy later on in, um, in the future. So depending on like the time that you have um, and your circumstances uh, during that time, I would recommend learning at least the basics of everything uh, that you're doing. And that's where that ties in with the fundamentals um, as well. So if you come across a technology um, and you don't know how it works, I would recommend uh, learning how it works, at least the basics. Um, the second thing is don't give up. Um, this field can be really tiring and burnout can happen like in your first year of being in this field, especially if you're the type of person like me um, that wanted to learn everything all at once and advance immediately. I would I would recommend take it slow. You know, you're going to get there whether, you know, you're walking or you're running or whatnot. But if you're walking it, you won't be tired once you get to the finish line, right? And it's not really a finish line. It's for us, it's you getting the pen testing position. And you can't be tired when you get there because you'll learn, the more you learn, the more you understand that you don't know anything 
in this field. Um, and there's so much more to learn in this field. Like I thought getting that OSCP meant that, you know, I'm a professional pen tester because it's um, offensive. Uh, what does it stand for? Offensive security. Yeah. Offensive uh, security certified professional. Certified professional. Yeah. Exactly. So I thought, you know, people who had the OSCP, that means they, they're they like top of their field. Um, and then I got it. And then I realized I, I barely know like the bare minimum to do a pen test. And that's uh, not on the certification itself, but that's that's really what it is. It was a beginner certification. I think um, I, I believe that, you know, it, it was really useful for me and it would be useful for other people. Um, however, it's just a beginner certification. And so once you you understand that and then you start learning more and more about like the different technologies that you're going to be pen testing, the more you realize that you don't know much in this area um, and so you need to pace yourself because it's like a lifelong journey if you stay in this field and you don't want to burn out uh you know quickly um and so yeah that that would be uh my advice and you know at the end of the day you know people in this industry tend to be glorified um uh you know the people that are like top of their field but you need to understand that these are like man-made concepts and with man-made concepts anyone can learn them with enough uh, practice um, and enough experience and so you could do it um, as well and don't compare yourself to other people because some people have the aptitude to learn something in a day whereas it might take you um, you know a week uh, to learn it and people usually only share their success stories versus you know their failures um, and so I, I wouldn't recommend comparing yourself to people it's a journey and it's your journey um, and, and you'll get there again it's, it's just a matter of time sorry that was a long nah, uh, piece of advice <laughs> that's that's good that's great that's great advice thanks for sharing it thanks for sharing your story it was really good to hear your story and hear your 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 great advice your why is beyond your years <laughs> so <Thank> you. <laughs> hopefully people will listen to this and and use that advice so uh the thing about when we share advice like this it makes the next person's path their journey a little easier you know, when they can learn from our mistakes. So that's great that you're sharing your content and taking time to do, you know, podcasts like this. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's an honor. And thanks everyone for joining and we'll see you on the next episode. Bug Crowd's award-winning platform combines actionable contextual intelligence with the skill and experience of the world's most elite hackers to help leading organizations identify and fix vulnerabilities, protect customers, and make the digitally connected world a safer place. Learn more at bugcrowd.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Hacker Factory podcast with Philip Wiley. If you learned something new and this podcast made you think, then share ITSBmagazine.com with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company and wish to associate your brand with our conversations, sponsor one or more of our podcast channels. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.